हेलो चिल्ड्रेन वेलकम टू आर टूडे सेशन हिस्ट्री लेसन नंबर फाइव वॉट बुक्स एंड बरियंस टेलर्स सो ओपन योर टेक्सट बुक चिल्ड्रेन वी आर गोइंग टू रीड द लेसन देन वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व द एक्सरसाइज एंड वी आर गोइंग टू सी द वीडियो ऑफ दिस लेसन सो जस्ट ओपन योर टेक्सट बुक वी विल बी रीडिंग द बुक वॉट बुक्स एंड बरियंस टेलर्स सो यस इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव सीन द Uh, what do you mean by vedas as i have told you vedas vedas means knowledge they are the books they are our in, books of ancient indias okay so uh, uh, here now we are going to see one of the oldest book in the world so which is the oldest book in the world so vedas okay our our vedas they are the one of the oldest books in the world there are four of them this vedas they are divided into four Rigveda, Samaveda, Yajurveda, and Atharva Veda. The oldest Veda is the Rigveda, okay, which was composed about three thousand five hundred years ago. The Rigveda it includes more than thousand hymns. So, what do you mean by hymns? Hymns means they are the prayers which are used to praise gods and goddesses. So, these hymns were also called as Sukta or well said. Again, they used to praise the gods, and what were the uh, important gods that were praised in that time was Agni, that is the god of fire, Indra, the god of warrior, and Soma, a plant from which a special drink was prepared. So these three gods were praised at the Vedas time. These hymns. were composed by sages that is rishi munis so these sages this priest they taught students to recite and memorize the hymns with each syllable okay with each word and sentences bit by bit with great care now when you are in nursery lower kg you upper nursery or lower kg how your teachers teaches you the poems word by word sentence by sentence in the same way this priest they used to teach the students to recite the hymns by word by word and bit by bit with words and proper sentences and most of the hymns were composed by the learned men and few were composed by women so this rigveda is it is was in the old vedic sanskrit form which is different from the sanskrit which we have learned, which are, we are learning today the books we use today are written and printed form the rigveda it was recited and heard rather than read it was written down several centuries after it was first composed and printed less than 200 years ago now we will see how historians study the rigveda means how the historians okay they were able to study the rigveda historians like archaeologists they find about the past but in addition to materials remain they examine the written sources as well okay so these historians what they do they examine the sources of which was written this is a part of now some of the hymns in rigveda are in the form of dialogues so the hymns or the praises the prayers the, which were written in rigveda they were in the form of dialogues between a sage called as vishwamitra and two rivers that is bias and satluj so uh, and this is a manuscript children okay it is a page from a manuscript of the rigveda this manuscript of the rigveda it was on a birch bark and was found in kashmir this is a dialogue between vishwamitra and the two rivers you can read at home what does it say now we we are going to see about the cattle horses and chariots there are many prayers in rigveda for this cattle horses and chariots horses were yoked to the chariots that were used in battles which were fought to capture the cattle battle means this battles were used for were fought to capture the cattle it were fought to capture the land it was fought to capture the people some of the wealth that was obtained it was kept by the leaders some was distributed to the priest and among the people and the some wealth it was used to perform the yagnas or the sacrifices to uh, 
in which offerings were made into the fire and these were meant for gods and goddesses and these offerings include ghee grain and in some cases animals also most men took part in these wars there was no regular army but there were assemblies where people met and discussed the matters of war and peace and they chose the leaders who were often brave and warriors means at that time there were no kings nothing no army only the people who fought the wars they among themselves they chose one as the leader now what words were used used to describe the people at that time so in rig veda two groups of people were called one was priest that were called as brahmins and the other group was called as rajas and these rajas they were not like the ones which we are learning or which we will be learning about later they did not have any capital cities palaces etc normally sons did not automatically succeeded the fathers as rajas then we are then we will see the two words that are described the people or the community was one was jana and another was vish or the word vishya comes from vish and jana means pura example we can refer to pura janas or vish the bharata jana or vish or the yadu jana or vish and so on so jana means people or community again the people who used to write who used to compose the hymns were described themselves as aryas okay means aryas were the people who used to compose the hymns and and they called their opponents as dasas or dasyus means their opposite the opponents they called them as dasas and dasyus these were the people who did not perform any sacrifices they speak different languages and they are the people who were captured in the war who were defeated by another who were defeated in the war and the person who has defeated them they used to call make them their slaves and they used to treat them as their own property while rigveda was been composed in the north west of subcontinent there were other developments elsewhere so let us look at the some of this some of this now we are going to see some of the developments at the time of rigveda silent sentinels the story of megalith now we are going to see this megalith megalith means it is the burial spot okay the silent sentinel it is also called as the silent sentinels okay this is a burial spot the stone boulders are known as megalith you can see the stone boulders children okay the stone boulders are known as megalith they were carefully arranged by the people and they were used to mark the burial sites the practice of erecting the megalith began about 3000 years ago and was prevailing throughout the deccan south india in the north east and kashmir while some megalith can be seen on the surface often other megalith burials are often undergrounded means these sites okay burial sites some sites were on the ground they were made on the ground while some sites were made under the ground sometimes archaeologists find a circle of stone boulders or a single large stone standing on the ground so these are the indications that there are burials beneath this means if we found such a, a big stones like this single stone or many stones then we can, it means it see it is showing us the indication of the burial site all these burials have some common features the dead were buried with the distinctive pots which were black and red were okay also found are tools and weapons of iron and sometimes skeletons of horses horse equipments and ornaments of stone and gold were found now we will see this ornaments so sometimes this ornaments were found with the burial site finding out about social differences archaeologists think that objects found with the skeleton 
probably belong to the dead person. Sometimes more objects are found in one grave than in another. Here one skeleton was buried with 33. So, Brahmagiri children on map 2 page number 14 you will, you will find a place called as Brahmagiri. Here the archaeologists they have found a skeleton ok. It was buried with 33 gold beads, 2 stone beads and 4 copper bangles and 1 conch shell means even the burial sites it shows us the status of the person ok. So, here one of the skeleton it was buried with 33 gold beads, 2 stone beads, 4 copper bangles and 1 conch shell. It shows that the person whose dead body it was maybe he was a rich person. Other skeletons have only a few pots. This find suggests that there was some difference in the status among the people who were buried. Some were rich, others were poor, some can be chiefs and others were followers. Were some burial spots meant for certain families? Yes, sometimes megaliths contain more than one skeleton. This indicates that people perhaps belonging to the same family were buried in the same place though not at the same time. Means some of the burial spots they were specially meant for the same family. Okay. So, whichever persons whenever he dies the his body was buried uh, their bodies were buried in the same spot. It may it means that that spot was specially meant for the same for that particular family. The bodies of those who died later were brought into the grave through the port holes. Stone circles or boulders placed on the surface probably served as sign posts to find the burial site so that people could return to the same place whenever they wanted to. Now, here children I have shown you what here you can see the portholes ok. See this portholes sorry yeah see this is the portholes ok from where the died member it, the body of the uh, family member it was dispatched through this porthole. Yeah. Now, we are going to see a special burial at Inamgao. So, here in the burial spots some spots they were meant for the same for the members of the same family whenever they die. Now, we are going to see about the town called as Inamgao which is situated in Maharashtra. What is the special thing? What is the special burial site at Inamgao? So, find Inamgao on map 2 page number 14. You go through page number 14, there on the map you can see this spot Inamgao. So, this Inamgao, it is a site on the river Gode, a tributary of Bhima means uh, this Inamgao, it is in, it is on the uh, river Bhima, tribu one of the tributary of river Bhima called as Gode. It was occupied between 3600 and 2700 years ago. So, what is the specialty of this Inamgao here? The adults they were buried in the ground, they were laid out straight with their head towards the north means the dead person they were buried under the ground with their head towards the north. Sometimes burials were within the houses, vessels that probably contained food and water were placed with the dead means here in Inamgao even the bury they used to bury the person inside the house also and they used to keep the vessels containing food and water. What archaeologists have found? One man was found buried in a large four legged clay jar in the courtyard of a five roomed house. Okay. So, one burial site was such it one man he was buried in a five roomed house children. Okay. He was buried in a large five roomed house in a four legged clay jar in the courtyard, one of the largest home at the house at the site. In the center of the settlement, this house also had a granary 
the body was placed in the crossed leg position. Here they have mentioned you about the position of the dead person like his head was pointing the north and his legs they were crossed in, in a cross leg position. So, this was what a uh, we have seen about in Amgao a special burial at in Amgao. Now, what skeleton studies tells us? It is easy to make out the skeleton of a child from its small size. However, there are no major differences in the bones of a girl's or a boy. Sometimes people decide on the basis of what is found with the skeleton. For instance, if a skeleton is found with jewelry, it is thought to be a woman. However, there are problems with this. Often men were also worn ornaments. A better way of figuring out the sex of the skeleton is to look at the bone structure. The hip or the pelvic area of women is generally largest to enable the child bearing means this is how the archaeologists they used to uh, find out whether the skeleton belonged to a woman or a man. These distinctions are based on modern skeleton studies. About 2000 years ago, there, were, there was a famous physician named Char Charak who wrote a book on medicine known as the Charaka Samhita. There he states that human body has 360 bones. This is much larger than 200 bones that are recognized in the modern anatomy. Charak arrived at this figure by counting the teeth, joints and cartilage. Now, we are going to see occupations at Inamgao. Archaeologists they have found the seeds of wheat, barley, rice, pulses, millets, peas and sesame. It means the people they used to cultivate these crops. Again archaeologists they have also find the bones of number of animals, many bearing cut marks that show they may have been used as the food and have been found. So, which includes cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, dog, horse, ass, pig, sambhar, spotted deer, black buck, antelope, hare and mongoose. Besides even birds, crocodiles, turtle, crab and fish were found. So, there is an evidence that fruits such as bear, amla, jamun and dates and a variety of berries were collected. So, all this shows the occupation of people at Inamgao. Now, we are going to see the exercise children. Okay? So, take your pencil, we are going to see a, do this, match the pairs. So, what do you mean by Sukta? Sukta means well said. Okay? Then again chariots, chariots means, what do you mean by chariots? Match the pairs, chariots are used in the battles ok. Chariots are used in the battles. Again yagnas they were sacrifices, yagnas means sacrifice. Again dasas are called as slaves and meghalit it is a stone boulder. So, again once again I will repeat the answers. Sukta well said, chariots used in battles, yagnas sacrifices, dasas were slaves and Meghalit was called is a stone boulder. Now, we will do complete the sentences. First one, take the pencil and write ok. Slaves were used for dash. So, slaves were used for doing everything their owners wanted ok. So, write the answer. Slaves were used for doing everything their owners wanted them to do. Again, megaliths are found in dash. So, megaliths are found in the Deccan, South India, in the Northeast, and Kashmir. Okay? Megaliths are found in Deccan, South India, Northeast, and Kashmir. Next, stone arc circles or boulders on the surface were used to find the burial sites. So, answer is to find the burial sites. Next, portholes. 
they were used for what were the portholes used for i have shown you the picture also they were used for the entrance okay portholes were used for entrance e n t r a n c e entrance last one people at inamgaon 8 dash so people at inamgaon ate wheat barley rice pulses sesame fruits animals flesh of animals etc so some of these examples you can write here okay so shall i repeat once children complete the sentences write uh, take a note of it slaves were used for doing everything their owners wanted second one meghaliths are found in deccan south india north east kashmir third one stone circles or boundaries on the surface were used to find the burial site find the burial site fourth one port holes were used for answer is port holes were used for entrance and people at inamgaon ate wheat barley rice etc even they used to eat the fruits like bear amla and they used to eat the animals flesh so this is now i think the exercise is also over Uh, I'll show you the video again today. See the video of Inam Gau children. Okay. You are already aware of the great civilization of Harappa, but do you know there was another civilization that grew up in Maharashtra in western India? It is the civilization of Inam Gau. It is situated along the right bank. of the river ghot which is the tributary of river bhima are you aware of the term calcolithic it means the copper stone age is another civilization that grew up in maharashtra in western india it is the civilization of inam gaon it is situated along the right bank of the river ghot which is the tributary of river bhima are you aware of the term calcolithic it means the copper stone age inam gaon was an important town during the calcolithic age archaeologists have found seeds of wheat rice barley millets and different types of pulses peas and sesame which indicate that they might have practiced agriculture there are also evidences that show that fruits such as bear or indian plum amla or gooseberry jamun or black plum dates and a variety of berries were collected and eaten besides these they might have indulged into animal hunting as bones of a number of animals many bearing cut marks that indicate that they may have been used as food have also been found many burials have also been found in inamgaon adults were generally laid out straight with head towards the north sometimes they were buried inside houses probably they believed in afterlife because lots of vessels have been found near the burials archaeologists believe that they might have contained food and water in the courtyard of one of the largest houses at the site a man was found buried inside a large four-legged clayjar the body was placed in a cross-legged position do you know a granary has also been found in this house The estimated population of the settlement was approximately around 1000 people. Around 134 mud houses have been excavated at Inamgaon. It seemed that Inamgaon was a popular town around that time. So children here you have seen the video of Inamgaon okay 
how the um, how the burial site was located what the people used to cultivate what they used to eat now we are going to see some of the important dates given in this lesson uh, see children here some of the important dates okay beginning of the composition of the vedas it was about 3500 years ago means vedas were composed near about 3500 years ago again beginning of the building of megalith it was about 3000 years ago then settlement at inamgaon inamgaon the settlement took place between 3600 and 2700 years ago and last charaka it was discovered about 2000 years ago so these were these are some important dates now uh, children we are going to just recapitulate whatever we have studied by seeing this ppt okay we are going to recapitulate whatever we have studied now so here we have seen about vedas what do you mean by vedas vedas are the means vedas means knowledge which was passed by the sages to the students okay so vedas are our religious books they are the oldest books of the ancient india vedas means knowledge and the sages they used to teach the vedas to the students and these were recited and passed from one generation to another this is how the sages used to teach vedas to the students like uh, now we can say as gurukul form okay then there are four vedas rigveda samaveda yajurveda and atharva veda and this rigveda it was composed about 3500 years ago it has 10 books and it uh, it has hymns which were which are the prayers used to praise the gods and goddesses then we have seen four important gods sorry three important gods that were praised that is agni then we have seen indra and soma and again we have seen the goddesses that is the river bias and satluj then i've uh, told you about hymns what do you mean by hymns hymns are the prayers used to praise the gods and goddesses and most of them were learnt by men and few were learnt by women then this rigveda it was written in a old sanskrit form which is little different from our modern sanskrit language then we have seen uses of cattle horses and chariots okay how the hymns they praises they praise this cattle horses and chariots and the people who used why the people used to have war at that times the people they used to have war for the land so that they can grow the crops again they used to have war to capture the people they used to have war to capture the cattle okay and the wealth whichever whatever the wealth they obtain so they uh, first of all the wealth it was kept by the leaders then it was distributed to the priest then among the people other people and uh, again some wealth it was used for yagnas or to sacrifice to make happy the gods and goddesses and uh, the things which were uh, sacrificed were like ghee grain and in some cases even animals used to be sacrificed then this is a picture of yagnas how the yagnas were performed by the priest here the priest are sitting and they used to perform such yagnas then we have then we have seen what do we some of the words okay that were used to describe the people were uh, in rigveda two groups of uh, terms were used that is priest that is brahmins and another one is rajas and again two words were described used to describe the people to describe the people what were the words used that is jana and vish again we have seen aryas aryas are the people who compose the hymns okay and they were they uh, just their opponents were dasas these dasas they did, they did not sacrifice they did not take part in any of the sacrifices and they spoke the different languages these dasas they later became the slaves and these dasas are the people who were defeated in the war and the uh, the person who has defeated them they were the owners of these dasas 
then we have seen what do you mean by megalith megalith means a burial spot here a stone boulder was used to mark the burial spots and this where uh, this spots can be with a single stone or even a big stone they were used to mark the sites and all these burials were not same okay it they shows they, these burial sites they even show the status like rich persons were there, were buried with some uh, gold copper something uh, or some uh, other equipments whereas the uh, poor persons they were buried with pots which were black and red in color also the tools and weapons of iron and skeletons of horses were found in this burial sites which was buried with the person then archaeologists they suggest that there was a difference in the status among the people who were buried these are some burial sites this is a porthole and then we have seen the last point that is inamgaon it is it is in maharashtra okay it is situated on the river ghod that is a tributary of river bima again here the adults were buried on in the ground and their position was that head was facing the north and uh, legs were cross in a crossed position again vessels were the vessels were placed with the dead person containing food and water occupation of this people in inamga was uh, cultivating crops like wheat barley rice pulses again the archaeologists they have found the bones of animals which they suggest that this people they must have you uh, uh, these bones were you used for eating purpose okay again archaeologists also found the fruits like bear amla jamun etc that were collected so children this was what you have studied in this lesson uh, what books and burials tell us so we have read the lesson we have did the we have seen the video and we have solved the exercises also so you go through this lesson and try to solve question answers i will be giving you the notes later on so till then we'll meet again for our next lesson till then goodbye and thank you